Today I've decided to finally digest the entirety of a well-known horror film known as The Cat in the Hat. From what I've heard, this deranged film was mistakenly aired to a multitude of children in the early 2000s, and its ill effects have rippled through society to this very day. I'm going to recap exactly what happens here, and then I will explain the meaning behind it, and why it has done what it has done to whom it has done it to. Hello. I'm the theorizer, and I'm gonna write this as I watch. This is in fact a sort of reaction slash theory slash recap slash review, because that format works best for content such as this. This movie seems to begin with a rhythmic narration as we zoom into a small town named Anvil, which appears to be situated in a biome not dissimilar to the Switzerland Alps, blah 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 blah. This is when the horror begins. The entire town is immediately shown to be fake. The possibly demented narrator explains the sorts of comings and goings of this town. A real estate agent named Joan works out of a horribly designed building with bathrooms containing signs like, employees must constantly wash hands. <laughs> it's my immediate impression that this town, and everyone inside of it, is strange and not real. Almost like some sort of fake world, or maybe a bizarre experimental utopian test run. Everything looks to be almost cardboard, something like an alternate future diverging from a much more intense 1950s. The head real estate agent barely shakes another man's hand and freaks out, fires him, and sanitizes. It's like he's paranoid about an unspoken disease afflicting this little isolated population. It's like he is, I'm not saying by any means that that's the case. He fires anyone who isn't perfectly clean or perfectly perfect at all, really. It's not OCD, it's most certainly a rigorous system designed to create a perfect isolated world. And the world is very surreal. But the film stars Joan's children, Order and Chaos, portrayed by none other than Coraline and Curtis the Elf, respectively. Order in particular is quite obsessive, and Chaos is quite chaotic, I would expect nothing less. It seems as though Chaos is depicted here as a male, and Order as a female, contrary to the Taoist symbolism which is otherwise quite present. Order is a fixated little thing, who writes up her own will and plans graduate schooling. Self-aware irony is the central theme of this terrifying experience, which makes its intention even more dubious. Is it possible that this is a comedy in disguise? Chaos destroys its environment to the chagrin of Joan the caretaker and in comes no joke the boss baby. What an all-star cast. That's a preemptive reference. Coraline in particular here seems to know a thing or two about the real world's constitutional monarchy, suggesting that this universe does indeed have real locations outside of this town. They even show a military academy eight hours away that looks fairly realistic, and thus this is a fake utopia, not an entirely surrealist Earth. It's just this town. So, Boss Baby hates Taoism, surprise surprise, Order has a superiority complex, and in other news the sky is blue. The caretaker of Taoism disowns chaos in front of Order, which fragments reality and summons Austin Powers. Yes, Mike Myers himself plays the cat in the hat, hence my referential shrekening. Smash Mouth is in this film too, I think, but back to that in a minute. Feeling bad, the caretaker Joan puts in charge what might best be described as a liberal arts Edna mode. We see them watching TV, which contains more proof of a real Earth outside of this controlled experiment. More proof of this is the clouds that instantly rush in. But now back to the results of this fight between Joan and her son. Order and Chaos meet basically Austin Powers dressed as a cat, and it's the most horrifying thing imaginable. It's completely out of place and likely the main purpose of whatever sort of experiment is going on here. He is ironic and extremely aware of the environment he's in. The question instantly must be asked, is this the father of the two children dressed up? I say this because it's creepy and it feels like it almost makes sense, and because the boss baby Alec Baldwin is not their dad, but their dad was already mentioned, maybe they moved here to get away from him. At this point, it's getting creepy enough on its own without my symbolic embellishment, so I'm gonna refer to the film's elements by their given terms from here on out. I'm too dazed and confused writing this, and I'm actually blurring the lines for myself, so I have to stop it. The cat says he drove here from his place, and that he's lactose intolerant. Okay, but the strange part is that he causes weird voices and music and metaphysical manifestations to appear, which seems to be counterintuitive to the idea that he's Sally and Conrad's father. 
If he is their dad, then he should be human just like them. He's basically using magic, so this is where I start to question what is or is not their imagination and what is causing it all. Assuming it is some sort of experiment or beta utopia that could be a part of it, a population controlling hallucinogenic, but I continue to be inclined to say that this is their father trying to spend time with them, sort of like a Mrs. Doubtfire scenario, because the next thing the cat does is steal a picture of their mother that arouses him. I'm certainly not the first to suggest this father idea about any rendition of the cat in the hat. This seems to be an almost commonplace idea, but let's see just how much proof can be dug up here. He calls the curtains a train wreck as if he's had a hand in them in the past. I'm more tempted to say that this man is there of his own volition as opposed to being brought in by the mother for entertainment because he actually knows how to make Sally laugh already. He jumps on the babysitter and then shoves her in the closet, which does mean he's there to watch over them. There's also evidence that Sally is at a breaking point because the cat implies she's one bad day away from arson. He also immediately knows that Conrad wets his bed and he knows everything about their personalities. Also, I'm mildly delirious, doing this whole thing running pitifully low on iron and it's too late for me to see this film differently, so we're gonna roll with it. Apparently, the only cure for the kid's polar personalities is either painful injections or a musical number, again hinting that this is some sort of strange test. The cat throws Sally at the couch. The cat also vomits up a massive ball of hair, which is grotesque and evidential of dangerous method acting. Then we see what in the name of CGI f is that? So now I'm dead certain that these children are hallucinating. I don't know what happened here, but we have solid proof that this isolated town is not representative of the rest of the world, so this is almost certainly some sort of test involving hallucinogenics. Sally and Conrad maintain their sanity. This is all visual alteration, but who is this dressed up man? And is he a test? Is he their father, or is he something... Well, I don't want to say it in a YouTube video, but this whole scenario reeks of being extremely disturbing in a, a very real sense. I mean, the babysitter was probably anesthetized, too. Uh... The cat sings a song about neutering kittens, which gives him post-traumatic flashbacks, implying something severe happened to this man in his childhood. This is further evidence for him being part of the experiment, for him being their father, and yes, also for him being damaged and, well, at risk of demonetization to discuss. So. What if he's all three? A twisted father who's come back to kidnap his children and worse, all as an attempt to get back at his ex-wife and her possibly even worse new love interest? Again, this could be seen as extreme, but also rather obvious, so let's keep digging. The hallucinated fish acts as an orderly foil to the chaotic cat, reintroducing Taoism extremes to dull the severity of the kid's personalities. The cat spawns a portal to a bullfighting ring, but again, all an experiment. The fish references MTV and calls out this insane film for what it is. Maybe the fish is their dad. I think he might be from the cat's domain, whatever trip that might be like. The cat also knows about their homework and such. It's clear, though, why the mother, the orderly woman, divorced this immature madman. Then the cat makes them sign a contract with lawyers present, implying that this is a waiver of some sort for fun, and yes, we see some of it. Oh, this is perfect. It'll give us answers to what the hell hell they're signing over and what this cat is. From what I can read, it seems to take place in northwest Montana, and the cat is a paid performance actor. We also see a birth certificate which puts the cat's birthday as Mike Myers' birthday, which would make him 40 during the film, aka perfect father age, and almost right on target with the mother, Kelly Preston's age. The rest of the contract is mostly obscured legal word vomit. The cat seems to be self-employed then. Once they sign, the cat starts going full-on crazy and destroys the house with radically inappropriate behavior. The spawning of random animals and stuff is most likely the product of, again, hallucinogens. He has this creepy weird laugh when he closes his nostrils. Sounds kind of like... <laughs> I also think it may be possible that Conrad's conscience is the cat and Sally's is the fish, or vice versa. We'll see. Things get really off the rails here, physics breaks, so on, but it's all a part of the children's insanity. The fish does act like an inner voice to her, and even shows her a flashback that isn't her own, which is more suspicious. Perhaps it's an experiment testing controlled hallucinations, which is extremely disturbing, and thought implantation, blah 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 blah. 
The cat talks about drunk clowns with hepatitis. Alec Baldwin enters again and the cat vanishes implying it's a vision, maybe? Well, Baldwin is allergic to cats and starts sneezing, so the cat is clearly just hiding, but real. His suit must be made of real cat hair. Or maybe Alec Baldwin is all a part of the experiment, as I guess expected at this point. This is where the satire goes off the rails and the cat even duplicates himself, possibly implying the hallucinogens are causing a time distortion effect or the kids are seeing double. The ironic humor is disturbing though, and one cat threatens to kill another and make it look like an accident. The cats all go, oh yeah, and shake their hands up and down. He calls the other cat wrong, stupid, and ugly like its mother. This is most likely another reference to his ex-wife, the kid's mother. He chops off his tail and screams, son of a bitch, no joke, nearly as lightly censored as I just did. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god, I just figured it out. <laughs> oh my god, I figured it out. Oh my god. Pause. Pause everything. This is fake. Oh. My. God. It's an act. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. It's an act. I should probably break from my script for this part. It makes total sense. This is... A this is all a movie. Or more likely a play. Oh god, do you understand? I barely do. I told you I'm writing this while dazed and confused. For god's sake, I spent a month on this because my iron was so low. I need a damn blood transfusion. I need to revisit this when I'm more lucid in the future. But what I do know is that this, people, this is huge. It's a movie. It's a movie. This is a movie. In universe, it's a movie in universe. These kids are actors in universe. This cat is the star of a show on a set. It's a set, literally, in front of an audience. It's not some inconsistent experiment, it's a stage play. We are watching a movie of a live play. Or a movie of a movie, I'm still not sure. The reason I say this is because of the absurd number of fourth wall breaks and lapses in logic. It feels almost perfectly like a stage play, but it is being filmed, because my whole basis for this was when the cat is talking to these two kids about a lawsuit, and then the camera zooms up on him and he says they'll talk later. This was an intermission. There was an intermission after he chopped off his tail. This is an elaborate stand-up comedy act, perhaps some sort of audience test viewing, and it's about a disturbed cat that meets two kids and livens up their day. The audience is watching, and there's a camera filming it all for posterity or whatever. The cat keeps breaking the fourth wall and talking to an audience literally there somewhere. I, I don't know where. That's the whole point. The cameras don't focus on what's behind them. It's a dimension we don't see upon viewing. That's what the fourth wall is. They even mock this and create a sixth f***ing wall during the cooking show segment. Now, as for the in-universe universe, I can still theorize on the intricacies of this play, such as the intricacy that he is their creepy father in disguise. Luckily, all of the surreal sets and lapses in logic and the subtle realism of the cat are all now explained under the fact that there is a secret lens we're looking through, an invisible fifth wall, an in-universe audience we can't see, a play written by fictional writers who are most certainly truly deranged. If it is a stand-up act, then it means this is all written by the guy playing the cat, which makes utterly perfect sense in every conceivable way. Oh good lord, I have to keep watching this movie. The in-universe universe is important too, you see. Gives insight into this actor. The cat is incorrect in every way, socially, politically, logically, physically, supernaturally. He says his wife's dress was ruined when she bought it. Yes, this is because he references her like a wife. I do wonder if the cat is their dad in real life too, like a family of actors? Of course, when I say real life, I don't mean real, real life, but the fact that I have to make that distinction, like I'm watching Inception or some shit, is unbelievable in itself. You know what this means though, right? Considering the writers are fictional, it almost gives me free reign to fill in their canon. I'm inclined to say that they actually did set out to create a play about order and chaos in human forms. The cat says, Thing 1, Conrad, Conrad, Sally. Thing 2, Sally, Conrad. I am the cat. 
They say Thing 2's name alternatively is Ben. Perhaps that's his actor's name. The things are manifestations of chaotic children. The child actors are smart too. Conrad points out how Cat's crazy dimensional magic is branded with a friggin' maid in Philippines. Thing 1 and Thing 2 go off on the house and look! It's a set! It's a set! Look! It's a set! <laughs> Let me get really real for a second. Only a second. When it comes to the humor in this movie, I don't even know how this film exists. Like, when I analyze things such as All Hail King Julian, obviously it's weird and inappropriate and whatever, but it can still pass as for kids in some way. This movie is so incredibly blatantly hilariously not for kids. The cat stares down their pet dog with a garden hoe and says, Time to die, in Mike Myers' Dr. Evil accent. It's so random and jarring, and then he calls this tool dirty. You see, I don't want to do the YouTube algorithm, but dirty, and you know the tool is. He says he loves it, and then he tries licking it. It's so shocking. How does this get past any censors? They even make it look like the cat is hanging by a noose, then they think he's a piñata, and one kid whacks him right in the neutered area as he screams and sees the light for half a second. This movie's too fast for me. The cat tries whacking the kid with the bat. Apparently the babysitter is triggered to wake up with the slightest noise of a phone call, but nothing else, conditioning much. The cat still hates the dog, surprise. Then the cat consoles Sally for not being invited to a party by telling her to live alone and die alone. All hail King Julian doesn't shock me. It may seem that way, but it doesn't. But this? genuinely shocks me. How does this get past censors? I mean, I'm not necessarily against it at all. It's freaking hilarious. But I know that there are volumes of people who definitely would be. And logic dictates that censors would listen to parents. Maybe... <gasps> maybe that's who the test audience is. <gasps> That's exactly who it is! Oh my god. Oh my god. The cat also seems to have a normal cool car. Turns out it sucks, and it's an acronym that spells out slow. He then spells out a phrase that would normally be shortened as a shit. This isn't subtle humor. How was this film made? This is all important because I think the concept of this film being highly inappropriate is the root of the test. The test audience, the test town, this is all a test in audience reactivity and in a very twisted way, we are a part of it. The cat then describes impulsivity versus conscience in a very basic way, but proves he probably isn't a psychopath, and not that that needed to be differentiated. The cat will spontaneously say things that random people in his life have said. For example, his mechanic. He stares down the cameras and asks when's the last time he's had his brakes checked. They see a semi-truck with a Rhode Island license plate. The cat claims his plan was to destroy their house, ditch the kids, and trick Alec Baldwin. Sounds sort of like a horrible, resentful family member. The cat mocks hippies and says he prefers the term canine American over dog. <laughs> then they enter a phone booth that leads to an Austin Powers party seemingly honoring the cat. The mom doesn't seem to suspect that the father is involved, despite Alec Baldwin ensuring it is the case. But I don't know how deep this in-universe universe goes considering these fictional writers are nutjobs. In the corners of shots, strange happenings happen. There's some dude just standing in the middle of town with a Persian cat in his arms and nothing is made of it. By the way, this CGI is clearly being rendered live on the set because of how bad it is. For a second I thought Alec Baldwin was an older version of Conrad, a version from the future in which he didn't learn discipline. Then I realized how backwards that would be considering the mom, so I dropped it. At this point, and at this depth, I'd not even be phased if they were to flat out explain the hallucinations. Which by the way they do. Turns out the cat literally spells out to the kids what's happening. When they accidentally unleash the mother of all messes and merge the two worlds into a CGI blob, he says, this is what happens when you eat bad shellfish. So apparently the kids are having a shared fever dream. Not hallucinogenics then, well, not in the typical sense. So there's her explanation for the in-universe universe's inconsistencies. Perhaps they truly are just seeing the cat, but from what I can tell, if he is a vision, they're envisioning their father. There's too many consistencies. He's a representation of their father one way or a damn another. Get this. They jump on the babysitter and ride her around the cat's universe like a roller coaster, and when Conrad points this out, time completely freezes and the cat says, You mean like at <laughs> Universal Studios? <laughs> Cha-ching! As he holds up two pamphlets. This is the king of all shameless plugs. 
This is the single most shameless, shameless plug I've ever seen shamelessly plugged, and it so completely proves that there is a test audience sitting right there! The fourth wall break to end all fourth wall breaks, cinema be damned. Cat says he loves that new ball smell. He then says he manipulated them the entire day and that it was all so they'd learn a lesson. They clean up Smash Mouth even gets a song which the cat references more made in Philippines than he leaves. So it can't all be fake, as Alec Baldwin is covered in goop afterwards and their mother sees it. There's also the fish, which is still sapient CGI after the cat leaves, and the couch, which breaks elasticity physics. So again, there are pieces of this experiment that aren't hallucinated, and of course, it's a play as well. Turns out the cat was the film's narrator, and he signs off by asking how the kids got so smart as if he's known them and raised him his whole life. So, in summary, this film is crazy. It took me two weeks to watch it because of how exhausting it is. The whole town is an experiment of some sort, and shellfish poisoning possibly plays into the hallucinated element. The cat is likely their creepy father dressed up, still trying to parent them in a way, or they're visualizing him in a fever dream, but it's still their father or a representation of him. This is all one massive stage play being shown to test audiences at Universal, likely children and their parents, as a sort of inappropriateness quality check. Utterly whack. This is one of the craziest films I've ever stumbled upon, and the best way to describe it still is that this whole film is honestly a gateway dark comedy for children. It's loaded with unintentional symbolism and randomness, and I love it for its self-aware stupidity. Now I have to get back to Mort. Oh god, can this channel really still deepen? Yes. Until next time, I'm the Theorizer.